The Women in Business Symposium is designed to nurture your spirit and support your journey in business. In a world where the demands upon us seem never ending, we gather here to explore the theme of what do I need right now? We'll look at a wide range of practical strategies that women can use to thrive as leaders in the workplace. This theme was born from candid conversations I've had with some of you in the room and many other women business leaders who, like many of us, face stress and challenges at work, not just once in a while, but practically every day. They voice their need for respite, be it a simple walk, time to exercise, a phone call with an old friend, or a quiet space to recharge. Today, we embark on a collective quest to rediscover these essential strategies and healthy habits that can guide us toward not just surviving, but thriving in our professional and our personal lives. So friends, let's all take a deep breath in. I'm giving you permission right now, followed by a long, deep breath out. A relaxation technique we can use anywhere and any time to disrupt the stress and explore these transformative strategies together. Okay, here we go. I'm taking energy from Tammy. I'm inviting you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and keep doing it all morning long. Okay, so let's get started with our keynote conversation. Our keynote conversation speaker is Julie Brandt. Julie is president of Building Solutions North America at Johnson Controls. Julie is responsible for strategy and execution of the sales, design, install, and service for the $10 billion North American direct channel business. She focuses on capturing market leadership, driving operational excellence, and accelerating growth by delivering a diverse portfolio of solutions for a variety of industries, from schools to office buildings, arenas to hospitals, to create healthier, more secure, and more enriching environments for BSNA customers. Julie joined Johnson Controls from Otis Elevator, where she most recently held the role of Executive Vice President and General Manager, U.S. Western Region, with full P&L responsibility across 28 states. Julie has lived and worked in North America, Latin America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. She spent most of her career with Otis, holding roles of increasing responsibility within branch and general management, operations, field execution, sales, marketing, communications, and business development. Julie earned an MBA and a bachelor's degree in international business and marketing from the Indiana University Kelly School of Business, as well as leadership certifications from Harvard Business School. Welcome, Julie. Our keynote conversation moderator is Caroline Kreider. Caroline is the Senior Vice President Relationship Manager and Milwaukee Market Leader, Global Industrials and Services, and has been with U.S. Bank and its first Wisconsin and first star predecessors for over 35 years. Caroline currently manages a portfolio of approximately 20 large corporate relationships in southeastern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. She serves on multiple nonprofit boards and is a regular volunteer. Other affiliations include Professional Dimensions, Tampa, Milwaukee, and serving as an annual judge and presenter for Deloitte's Wisconsin 75 Award. Please welcome Caroline Kreider. So Caroline, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Great to be here, of course. Welcome to the Milwaukee community, Julie. Thank you, Caroline. So fun. Excited to be here. Good. We're honored to have you at um, this year's Women in Business Symposium, of course. This is my first year, and I love it. It's so great. So Amazing to see so many fabulous women out here. Thank you for, for coming today. I think it's going to be a great day. Excited. I personally can't wait to start the conversation and uh, hear more about your career and how you balance your personal life with that. 
Um, yeah, so I recently joined Johnson Controls. First of all, I'd like to do a shout out to my Johnson Controls fabulous women here. Uh, they, they, they're joining us. Each of them hold different roles actually within our women's network group that we have. Uh, so some globally actually, we have one of our, 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 our leads for our global uh, WGN network uh, along with our Milwaukee and along with our North America team. So I think it's, it's absolutely you know, women in leadership in motion, which is, which is fabulous. So thanks for, for being here. Um, yeah, I, uh, I had, as, as they mentioned, I had a 27-year career at, uh, at Otis Elevator Company. Um, I chose the sexy industries, uh, elevators and buildings, uh, where my friends were in fashion, and I chose uh, elevators. Um, but anyway, I, uh, and then I recently joined Johnson Controls um, after, after a long career. Um, and I am so excited to be here in Wisconsin. It's... Um, it's one of my, uh, so my fam, my dad was a, a UW alumni. Um, we were born, I was born and raised in Chicago, and I was a Packer fan since I was this big, right? So, um, so I'm Packer, Bucks, you know, Brewers. I remember um, uh, Paul Molitor, is there, the, like kind of dates me a little bit, but I remember Paul remember Molitor. We too. used to go, <laughs> he was so cute. And I remember we used to go to the Brewers games and I would make little love letter, like little love notes, and then I'd go and like chuck it down in the, you know, the dugout or whatever. Is that what they call it? Um, so anyway, so I've always had an affinity for, for Wisconsin and, um, and so. It, this worked out perfectly with my life, um, you know, joining a company that's so rooted in, in Wisconsin and, and Milwaukee area. So how are, exactly are you approaching your first few months? Oh gosh, um, so I have uh, 27,000 employees. So it was um, when I first, uh, you know, decided to, to join the company, uh, my, my husband always jokes that I wanted to, to hug every one of the 27,000 employees to get to know them. Um, but I knew that I had to, uh, you know, coming into a very successful company, you know, you're kind of either turning around a company, which I've done plenty of those, but um, this was a sustaining success, right? This was a great company, um, had, had was really in, in a good trajectory, and I was going to be leading this organization. So. Um, I had to, you know, honestly go in gingerly in terms of listening to my employees. So I went on the road. So I was out to 12 different, um, you know, different offices, uh, visiting with the technicians, uh, with the sales team, and just really tried to listen and learn. Um, I think learning uh, earlier, um, uh, the, the woman from Freighter mentioned, you know, lifelong learning, just really listening and learning from your employees on what they want your role to be, what they want you to fix. Um, that was really instrumental in my, my first couple months at Johnson Controls. Good for you. So you came to Johnson Controls after 27 years, your entire career. Was it hard to leave? Tell us about that. Oh gosh, um, it was very hard to leave. I'm sure some of you are at different stages in your careers where you're contemplating what's next. What do I need? You know, what should I do next? Um, and I had had a wonderful career at, at 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 Otis and United Technologies. And and a piece of advice on that: it's great to stay at a company forever. I mean, it's it's wonderful. You are 39 years, 39 years at U.S. Bank. He's counting. <laughs> um, I think you know. Why did I have, I was, I lived around the world. I lived in, I was president of Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. I was in, you know, Latin America. And along that journey, I, I had a, th I always have a three-year plan. Um, it changes a little when, when you get to the C-suite because it's, you know, it tends to, um, you're not on a three-year plan anymore. But, um, you know, first year you go into a job, you're learning, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make an impact. You know, second year, you're, seeing if you made an impact. Did you actually deliver what you said you were gonna do? Um, and then usually between that second and third year, I, I usually work with my leadership and say, hey, I, in a year, will probably be ready for my next job. Let's talk about it now. So I never you know, held, a, you know, held a gun to their head to say, hey, I gotta leave tomorrow, I gotta move tomorrow, right? I started to have those really great career conversations you know, with a year in advance because then a lot of times your company can move things around. They can you know, look for, when they're thinking about different opportunities to create new roles, they do because they really value you. So I think it's so critical, especially if you are gonna stay at a company, um, to make sure you have those conversations so you're continuing to advance your career. 
Um, but for me, it was, uh, we, you know, I always have had, I'm, I'm kind of a planner. Um, so when I had first joined Otis, uh, my old boss said, well, the first advice he gave me is, you don't need to dress like a man. That was his first advice. Cause I came, awesome. I came, a man told you that? <laughs> yeah. I came to work every day dressing like a man, you know, and he said, you can... The bow tie? <laughs> So he said, first of all, you can dress like a female. I was like, okay, thank you. Um, but then he told me that I needed to have a 10-year plan, which if I tell any of you right now, have a 10-year plan, you're probably like, I cannot, I need to focus on tomorrow, right? How do I make it through tomorrow? Um, but really force yourself to have that 10-year plan. What does that look like? So I had started my, so I've done that my whole career. So uh, about Very a year impressive. ago. <laughs> Ten's a long time. I, mean, I remember being asked my five-year plan. I thought that was pretty long. Yeah. So well, I think 10-year sets on that horizon. So I said, okay, in 10 years from now, if I want to retire, like this, that fabulous woman that is retiring at 60, um, you know, what does that look like? And I thought that I needed to add more skills to my tool set to actually be able to be on boards, you know, maybe, uh, you know, talk to investors and things like that. So I started that journey by, for myself. I didn't, I didn't force the company to help me with it. I, I decided I was going to begin that journey. And in the process, I did meet a headhunter uh, when they were talking about boards and, and different opportunities like that. Um, and they just slid just this. Just one? Just one. Just one. I, I normally have not taken headhunter calls just because you're busy doing your work. Uh, and he slid this job across, you know, across the table and said, would you be, in, you know, would you be interested? And, and then met the team at Johnson Controls and they were fabulous. So decided to, to join. So Excellent. We're thrilled to have you here. So tell us about the opportunities that you've turned down. Or you don't have to tell us about those, but I'm sure um, at Otis they offered you other opportunities and you turned them down probably. Yeah, I actually recently met with a bunch of women uh, from Johnson Controls, and it was that was what they wanted to talk about was, you know, I think females, you know, we have a lot on our, our, our shoulders, right? Our families are, you know, I have two kids. I have a 13-year-old and a 16-year-old. You know, I'm a wife. I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm all the things. You guys saw the Barbie movie or all that things that the Barbie movie, uh, you know, mentioned, right? Um, and And, you know, I think that, you are, you're on a journey, right? You're on a journey of how, um, I can't remember where. <laughs> Turning down upper the Barbie, the Barbie movie, the Barbie <laughs> movie. Like, we, we talked a lot about the Barbie movie. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Um, no, when I'm turning down, so at different points in your career, you're either accelerating because you're like, okay, I can accelerate right now. Or all of a sudden you're staring, you've got a two year old and a five year old and you're like, this is, you know, I just need to, I need to pull back a, a little bit. Right. Or you're like, Hey, you know what? I'm in, you know, later in my career and I want to just kind of do what I'm doing and I'm really happy with what I'm doing. Right. So I think on that, you know, I, I do think um, there were many times that I just said, hey, I can't move right now. I can't do this. And I was scared to death that the company was not good. They were going to say, oh, you're off the career ladder. You're, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, put you to the side. And they just don't. They don't. If you're a talent, whenever you're ready to go, they're ready to, to, to take you, right? So, so I think just it's that line of communication that you have with your, with your managers and your leaders um, to say, this is where I am right now. Um, and I would balance that though, because as many of you, as if you are leaders, you've probably tried to convince a woman uh, to advance faster than they feel they can advance, right? Um, and so a lot of, so I think it's that right balance of pushing yourself to say, I can do more, I can, you know, I, I can take that, that next step, um, but balancing it with at certain points in your career, you're just, you're just going to want to be fine with what you're doing, right? And don't feel bad about that. I don't think that's something to feel bad about. I definitely had that. I think that's great to hear, really, because people really do worry about that, you know, that they're going to not be considered high potential anymore and, you know, oh, you know, you turn that down, so you're going to turn down the next one, but I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so we've, um, we've talked a little bit about you. How do you lead? Um, and I'll just say that you know, as a banker, for almost four decades, I've worked with Johnson Controls, 
and I've heard, not surprisingly, a lot of really great things, for one thing, um, <laughs> you know, that you're a rock star, and you can tell already, you know, what a professional she is, um, but also um, that you're so authentic, and I met Julie last week, and we were supposed to have an hour conversation that went for two hours, and I was like, I want more, so <laughs> tell not us how you Not good at eat. time management, clearly, no. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there was some wine involved, but only one glass. <laughs> I love to spend time with other fabulous women like, women like Carolyn. Um, how do I lead? So um, I, I'm sure like many of you, you know, I'm, I, I am a constant learner. So I do, I'm very clear that I am not the smartest person in the room and that I'm always working on myself. So I always have something that I'm working on to do better, to, to be better. Um, and so, you know, I just have my little list of things. I'm like, okay, I got to lean in there. I got to work on that. Um, but I, I really, you are who you are and you can't be someone else, right? So if, if, if Johnson controls, if it's not the right fit for me as a leader, it's not the right fit for me. I, that's where I've come to as, as a leader. Uh, and so I'm, I'm authentic. I am, you know, I am get in the trenches and, and really get to know the organization and the people and, I'm very transparent with how I, I, I talk to, to my teams, um, and I really try to just be myself, which is just a Midwest, Midwest gal that is, you know, leading a large organization and, um, and listening and, 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 and really trying to do the best as a leader that I can, right? Um, so I just, I've gotten to the point now, and I don't know if it's with time and with age, you just say, you are who you are. And so embrace who you are and lead with this with the the confidence that 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 what you have to offer is is good enough uh and sometimes it is is just exactly what the organization needs because a lot of times people need authentic leaders right they don't need the cookie you know they don't need that they need real they want to hear from you as a real a real a real person that you're just like them so right People, people. We need more of those people, especially in banking. I will say, just, just saying. Um, you know, we, we, we do have a few bureaucrats. Um, you know, when, when we have you know eighty thousand people. But um, anyway, um, any pushback? You know, to your style, and how do you deal with that? I think it sometimes. I mean, I can ask my team, but I think it sometimes takes people you know, off guard, they're, they don't, you know, they're expecting something different. Um, I have a, a wedding coming up. My, so my husband is a farmer from Wisconsin, um, literally a farmer, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> love farmers from Wisconsin. Um, my niece is fabulous. She is getting married at the Racine County Fairground. So I'm excited to, to go to the Racine oh, County Fairground. Anyone yeah. else been to a wedding there? <laughs> anyone coming to that same wedding? Because it might be. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're having 500 people, but anyway. Um, so my sister-in-law, I was talking to her, and and she has uh, it, it's anyway. Her niece basically works at Johnson Controls, and she hasn't met me yet. And so she was all nervous to meet me at this wedding, and then I got nervous to meet her at the wedding because I'm like, she's gonna think that I'm, you know, I can't be dancing on the dance floor with my cowboy boots, you know. So it was, a, it was, you know, I think people, you know, expect you to be something, and then. You know, so I think that's, you know, where you don't get pushback necessarily, but I think it's people saying, well, what do I do with, with her? <laughs> um, good. Yeah, yeah. That's but cool. I, and one other, we, one thing we talked about that I think is important is own your own narrative. Like I, I, I have my narrative of who I am and as a leader, and I don't. It, like know what your narrative is if you you're what's your 24 hours from now what are you going to do like write down your narrative who are you right so I am you know I am an authentic leader that I hold people accountable but I, and I, I I'm you know I'm I'm firm I'm I'm you know all the things you need to be when you're running a, a 10 billion dollar organization um, but I do it with the white glove right I try to you know really understand and have that culture of caring when I'm leading um, and so 
but I'm firm, right? And so I don't let anyone take that away from, from me, especially when you have a lot of, you know, males in your, in your environment, right? Where they, they tend to, you know, just that's how they show up. They show up a lot more stern in some, in some instances, right? And so just, you know, making sure you have a narrative and that you own that narrative, I think is, is really important. That makes sense. So how do you take care of yourself and balance it all? Um, that famous word balance. For example. For example. <laughs> were you able to sleep in this morning? <laughs> um, because I have it on good authority that meetings start at 6 a.m. at Johnson Controls. I'm just getting out of bed, really. <laughs> uh, and you can't take meetings from the car. Yes. Wow. Yes. So it was... So I've always been an early riser, but this is, it's a very early company. So everybody's culture is different. Our culture is 6 a.m. meetings, in person, um, on camera, like you have to have showered, blow dried your hair, and makeup has to be on, right? Like by 6 a.m., um, which is fine. It took a little bit to, to get used to because I had probably a 7 a.m. calls in my other life. Um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, that's something that everybody's striving for, right? We're all striving for what's that Shangri-La of balance. Um, I have I've definitely decided that it's not balance, it's integration. So I, you know, I integrate my family and my work in, they're together, they, they just are, they can't not be because my life is, you know, full. Um, both, both professionally it's full and both personally it's, it's, it's full. Um, you know, one big change I made for many of you late night um, love to watch the streaming, um, you know, <laughs> streaming shows, right? Um, that was me uh, because I would just need to like download and just do, you know, num mind numbing, right, TV or whatever. Um, I prioritize sleep, which my husband will laugh that I'm saying this on this stage because I never prioritize sleep. He was a sleep guy. Um, he bought me the aura ring. I don't know if anyone has the aura ring. So um, that's a, a curse and a blessing. Um, but it tells you every morning. So today it told me my readiness score is 82. So <laughs> I know how I am today. Um, What's the but, highest it's been? Oh, gosh. Um, only 86, actually. Okay, so you have some work to do. <laughs> exactly. But we laugh. It's like chicken or the egg. Is the is the is it telling you that you're you're solid? So then you should be solid, or is it telling you you know what what? So, uh, but anyway, I yeah, you're at a hundred. I'm at. A, <laughs> um, but it is something that you're just as as a female. We can you know there are moments where you know our emotions kick in. Um, you know we our emotions kick in. We're really frustrated and we. And I find that with me sleeping more or really prioritizing it, I'm able to handle a lot more of the challenges that come at me in a much more level, level-headed way. So, if you can do anything, you know, put down, you know, turn off the TV, get to bed, and and you will just over time, you just feel much more healthy. I haven't started to work out yet. That's next on my list. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently you should put these away a half hour before you go to bed, right? Yes. All right, so what are you reading or listening to? I think you told me about something last week. Yeah, I, um, yeah so I, I have to do podcasts now because I do drive. And as uh, Carolyn mentioned, so Johnson Controls has a wonderful policy that um, you cannot talk on the phone while you're driving. So for many of us that used to take work. calls while you're driving, I can't do that anymore, which I found out after I joined Johnson Controls. <laughs> so uh, the good news is I, I now have, because I often am traveling from uh, Chicago up to our office, I have about an hour you know, each way that I have to figure, you know, figure out other ways. So I do a lot of podcasts. Um, I Happier Hour, if anyone um, needs a great book on how you spend your time, I think it's an awesome book to read based on the topic of what, what everyone is interested in. Uh, it really helps you reset um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a UCLA professor that um, she studied happiness and, w you know, how do you get happiness? And it was a whole story where she wanted to quit because she couldn't, you know, she, could, she felt like she didn't have enough time in a day and ended up um, realizing, you know, how to actually manage her time better. And so that's a, that's a good book. It's a good book. I've already ordered it. So 
So who do you turn to for advice? Do you have a personal board of directors? Tell us about that. Yeah, and again, I know it is cliche. I, you know, you all are, are, are here for networking. I do think it's absolutely critical. Um, I do have a board of directors that I, a personal board of directors that I go to um, that that each have different skills. I, I One of my best friends is a lawyer and, you know, she's she's kind of there if I need legal, you know, legal advice. Um, uh, my old head of HR, uh, you know, I was just calling her on the way in because we're making some incentive changes. And so, you know, I, I asked her about thoughts about, you know, what works and what doesn't. So I do think kind of curate your board of directors that you can go to. Um, and then, you know, prioritizing friendship. Uh, you know, I wasn't good at this. My sister, who was in the fashion industry in New York, had so many friends. You know, she was just plentiful. You know, she had so many friends. And I remember watching her saying she really prioritizes friendships. And it's hard because your family and work and everything is is, is really challenging. Um, but I would just say carve out that time. It, it, it just it, it recharges you. It it makes you feel like you're you're one with a community of, of, of females that uh, are so powerful in and of themselves. And so um, I definitely prioritize friendships and and spending time with with friends and family. And family, of yes. course, family. Yes, yes. I loved I loved hearing how you met your husband, but yeah. we, maybe we won't <laughs> go into that right now. <laughs> um, so you lived in four different regions of the world and you've met a lot of women, how do you think they balance their lives and is it any different than how they do it in the United States? Yeah, um, you know, there's so many similarities. There's so many similarities uh, from, you know, around the world. It, it met with, you know, our India team and um, this is these are amazing women that are, you know, everyone's dealing with the same thing, right? You, you, how do you how do you have a family? How do you, you know, how do you be, you know, excel in your career? And so interestingly enough, it was very similar in, in all the places I've been. Um, I would say the support structures have been different, right? So um, in Hong Kong, they had fabulous support structures for females. Um, it was actually interesting. I couldn't get a female, a woman's network together because they were like, why? We're totally fine. Like, we're, we're at the table. What, what's the big deal, you know? So we used to struggle with topics uh, a lot because they're, you know, they're, it's a very um, supportive environment for females. Um, so it is interesting to see how a support network um, can really catapult a female, um, whether that's you, your own family or whether that's resources that you you, you bring right um, to support in terms of babysitting and 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 all of that. But I, I think the common theme is that we do need some levels of support, right, to to make this all happen, whether it's family or or, or, or otherwise. Yep, that makes sense. So you're involved in JCI's Women's Global Network, which has a mere 4,700 women in it. 4,700 women. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really great organization. Uh, we just kicked off, I guess, three years ago, uh, our, our BRGs again, um, our business resource groups again. Uh, and this group, they decided to do it globally along with kind of local, more local chapters. Uh, and so yeah, we're at about 5,700, 5,600. Oh, sorry, 4,600, 4,600 um, women globally, which is really a, a testament to, to the leaders here today that are reaching out to the females that, that, that really, you know, it, we do not have as many females as we would like, um, as many organizations uh, are, are, you know, cha are challenged with, right? So uh, continuing to provide uh, support networks for the females in our organization is, is absolutely critical. So, um, so. Great job to my team. <laughs> we have one too, and that's awesome. Yeah. So the Wall Street Journal claims women own this, this summer, and the economy proves it. I don't know if anyone saw this in the Wall Street Journal, two pages. Um, but anyway, I thought it was fascinating, uh, of course. So women, women own this summer, the economy proves it. That's yes, cool. so how cool is that? So you've contributed to that at Johnson Controls, but also <laughs> personally. So um, maybe you have um, gone to a concert or seen a movie, I don't know. <laughs> um, have any of you been to Taylor Swift concert this summer? <laughs> she was one of the lucky ones, but I see, uh, I see a couple hands. Uh, it's hard to get tickets. That was fun, I know, it was, uh, yeah. 
um, it was a lot of fun with taking my daughter and, um, you know, we were talking the other day about the era tour and the fact that she was, you know, talking about the different eras, what era did you dress up as and you had to dress up. Um, but I, I just, it goes, it really reminded me of the eras that we're all in in our life, right? Um, you're early in your career, you're just starting, what can you do then? Um, you know, then you move to a new era and how do you reinvent yourself in each of the eras, right? Kind of gone with the old, on with the new, right? What, what, what are you gonna, how are you gonna show up if you take a new role? How are you gonna show up differently? What do you wanna try out? I always say, try out different leadership styles, right? Try out, you know, you gotta be authentic, but, but you know, when you get into that new era in your life, you know, if you want to show up differently, try to, right? Try to try it still be authentic, but <clears throat> maybe test some of your leadership skills that maybe, um, you know, as you progress and you get more confident in your career, um, that you, yeah, live in different eras. Uh, yes. Good. Good. And Barbie. <laughs> so what did, what did you think? You know, so, so I'm just curious, um, a hands, um, who've seen the movie. You know, people either love it or hate it, and I happen to love it. It was sobering, that's true. I think Lindsay said that, you know, it's just, but, you know, it's patriarchy, or matriarchy, patriarchy, yeah. mix. Yeah. Um. I happen to love it. I thought it was really funny, maybe because of when I, grew, when I grew up, it had a lot of references to kind of our, our age of growing up, right? Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's... So the the part where um, what was her name um, America she, the, where she's pregnant? going yeah no when she was going off about I'm this I'm that you know females are this females are that and and stuff like that um, I'm kind of a I'm kind of the type saying okay so so what yeah that is reality right that is what we face often um, but what are you gonna do about it right like what what are you gonna do about it and um, and so I go back to really, you know, leaning in and doing, uh, doing something about it, right? And, and so, you know, I, I, I think back to early in my career, I remember I was probably two years out of college and, um, you know, I went to the CFO of the, of the factory that I was working in and said, hey, we need to change the whole pricing strategy for this, you know, for this company. Um, and and I, was, I was two years in, I was this young punk, right? Like, um, and he was like, that's great idea. And we, you know, we worked through it. So I think the point is at any point in your career, you have the power to do a lot and to really shape and influence organizations and at any stage in your career. So, you know, you can make a difference. I really truly believe that. Um, and so I think it's, you know, the cards were dealt or the cards were dealt and what you do with it is what defines you. So... There's no need to stay in the box. No need to stay in the box. Yes. <laughs> so we have about two and a half minutes, and I'm going to check my phone because I think we have some questions. All right. So based off three-year planning, can you see that fitting into no, – I'm sorry. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> um, you said you're always working on yourself. What are some things that you are working on now? What am I working on now? Um, sleep. So, what? Sleep. 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 Um, yeah. You know, when you uh, when you continue to move up in the organization, it's like the woman was speaking about earlier. You are no longer the knowledge base. You are the leader, right? And so you can't touch everybody in the organization every single day to, to really make it, you know, make a difference. So I am trying to continue to find ways to connect and motivate um, and build morale in a, in a very decentralized organization. Uh, and so that's something that I'm, I'm continuing to, to strive for um, is what can I do differently? How can I lead uh, that organization in a very decentralized way? You know, how can I show up um, and make a difference uh, and, and, and lead the organization. So I think as you continue to move up in your career, you know, you're no longer right in front of the people, right? You're, you're um, and so how do you lead, uh, lead that large organization? So that right. was what I'm working on now. So when I heard that you had 27,000 people 
in your organization, I, in your organization, the $10 billion organization, I thought, oh my goodness, how many direct reports do you have? Uh, I have 20 direct reports. So okay. 20. Um, a little bit more manageable. A little bit more, yeah. Yes. Definitely more manageable. Good. And it's not me running, I mean, that's the whole point. It yes. is, Kathy, it is ex Kathy did a great Kathy job. Kathy did a about fabulous that. job. Yeah. Right. I am just the orchestrator of these this whole organization. Talent. It's absolutely the talent. Yep. That's the first thing I also do when I go into a new role is I focus on the talent first. I get the talent straight. I, I lean in a lot on the talent to make sure that there's development plans that you know that you got to start there because you just you can't do it unless you've got um, the best and the brightest on your team. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, here is probably our last question. Um, what advice do you have uh, for women who get rave reviews but no actionable items to move up if they want to move up? Mm. So yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. Five star, high pot, but what? What's next? You know, I, you got to have the conversations, like the direct and transparent conversations with your leadership. And, I, you know, I've had it happen to, where a female has said it to me where you're like, are you are you saying that you want this job or not? Right. Just be direct about what you want. Right. Hey, I love this job. What's the timeline of when I could get there? What are the, the key development you know, needs that I think the clearer you are with your organization of, of first of all, your limitations. I can't move. Oh, maybe I can, you know, like I, I, maybe I could move or I don't want to, you know, I don't want to travel too much or I will travel, right? It, it's a lot of times when, when, when you're, we just have to be more direct uh, about what we want and ask for what we want. And a lot of times you'd be surprised you'll get it. Yep. Go for it. Go for it. All right. Do it. Getting the, uh, the cutoff. Yeah, but was, one of the things we talked about last week was <laughs> <laughs> that when you have a professional headshot, um, it's hard to like wear the outfit again because yeah. you see yourself coming and going like in the directory or LinkedIn or, or whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> one piece of advice, if you're getting a headshot, borrow a jacket from Definitely. Somebody. I went out and bought a jacket. <laughs> so did Caroline. And now I can never wear it. It's a fabulous jacket. I love it. But every time on Teams, my picture comes up with the same jacket on. And so I can't be wearing that same jacket. So these are our blue jackets. <laughs> I want this we're, one. We're, 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 exchange, we're exchanging jackets today, so. Yeah.